Hopefully you're enjoying your commute. We're trying to bring you those positive vibes. That Summer Jam 2015 major announcement yeah, yeah. just happened. Omarion, Ty Dolla Sign, Fab and French, Childish Gambino, Big Sean, Meek Mill, Trey Songs, Chris Brown, and our guest right now, Kendrick <laughs> Lamar. Give it up for Kendrick, y'all. One more time. Yo, man, I appreciate you making uh making the trip to New York for one day for this announcement. Hey. Cause I know you gotta get on like a one o'clock and bounce out. Hey, I'm back home with it, but summer jam, man. What's happening, man? Come on. Now Kendrick was just telling me off the air, y'all, that the love that he gets in New York City and the reason he comes here so much just for one day to do an in store in Brooklyn, or whatever, is just the respect and the love that this market shows you. Yeah, all the time since day one, um, I realized it was a different type of energy. Because me doing music in the city in Compton, I never thought in a million years that my music would be appreciated on the East Coast. You mm. know what I'm saying? So what I found out is that, you know, out here they just generally love rap lyrics. Yeah, rap. <laughs> Period. Yeah. You dig know what I'm saying? I mean, like none other city, you feel what I'm saying? Because I can get love somewhere else and it'd be like, okay, we rock with you. But here it's like... It's a little bit different, you know, when you when you telling when you speaking the truth and you, you you stand for something like you said. Yeah, well, you know, here in New York, they even if they don't like you, but they'll respect you mm. if you stand your ground. Oh. If you spit bars, if they disagree with you, they actually prefer to see you in the street and be like, "Yo, you know what? I don't really like what you have to say half the time, Bar. but I respect what you do." <laughs> That's a New York thing. But it's been happening for you here for a long time. Like Even since the mixtapes, you've been selling at SOBs and doing venues out here. That's the first thing that tripped me out, the SOBs thing. You know what I mean? Because that's legendary. You know, so me coming out here and, and, and selling it out and having the actual energy. You know, sometimes you can have a packed house and, you know, they might not be rocking. They just want to see what's happening. You know, but they had the energy out there for me. So I took that back home and said, okay, they rock with us. Yeah, they sure do. So, um, the album number one in the country, The Pimple Butterfly, um, based on To Kill a Mockingbird, was that the inspiration for it? It wasn't. Trip off that. Really? Yeah, I, I caught wind of that after the joint came out and somebody brought it to my attention. Really? Which I thought was ill, you know what I mean? Because the, the, the story that, you know, that's profound in that, it's got similarities to what I'm talking about. Which is crazy, though, because I didn't think about it that way at all for uh, either. And then of course I'm like, oh well, he had to do that because it's the exact same syllables, and it's kind of a random thing, but it's yeah. totally coincidental. Yeah, that's yeah. wild. Do you um? Can you explain to everyone because I've heard speculation, speculation, speculation? What you're saying with the album title to Pimp a Butterfly? What are you exactly saying? It's several meanings actually. Um, the first one that can, I, I can think of off top. Um, Taking something, taking something, uh, uh, taking my celebrity and, and, and doing good with it, and or for or for worse, and it's me deciding that you know being a leader. Um, like I said, the butterfly it represents the thoughtfulness. It represents how people view me in, in, in society, being um, on the TV screen. So what I can do with that, I can say middle fingers up to everybody back where I come from and go live on top of the hill. Or I can do something productive with it. That's one meaning. Now, we can go a little bit deeper as far as what the industry, uh, how the industry look at artists and, 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 and how they pimp artists out. Mm. It can go from that or it can go to an even more higher uh, standpoint as far as how the world view. Mm -hmm. Coming from urban community, coming from the hood, you feel me? Mm -hmm. At what point when you were making this record, did you realize this was a thing? Like you were going to be making this album that followed this. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes people get in the lab and they start making records and they're making songs and the album comes together. This album is so thematic all the way through. Mm -hmm. At what point did you realize, okay, this is the project I'm doing? Um, I mean, he was talking about uh, me actually going in there with the live instrumentation and seeing how much uh, a freestyle and improv it was for me. Um, he's one of the records where we go in the studio and we spend about 10, 15 hours in the studio just vibing out, almost a jam session. Right. And I write my little skeletons down, whether it's some hooks, whether it's bridges, verses, come back as a demo and, and, and re-spit it the next day. You feel what I'm saying? So that moment I knew it was something a little bit different because when you're bringing all these instruments together, it's going to feel and sound theatrical. It's going to feel like uh, uh, you're watching a movie, you feel me? 
Yo, Cash, you got that all right ready off the Pimple Butterfly. Yeah, yeah. That's our joint. Run that for us. We play King Kunta. King Kunta's your official single. There's going to be a video for that coming yeah, yeah. soon, right? Coming soon. Very right. soon. Anything we should look for in that video? A um, lot of energy, a lot of fun. Me going back home, going back with my homies. Um, majority of the homies you see on the album cover and, and a little bit more than that you know so just showing them something different you feel what i'm saying it's it's, it's really about time man people think it's about money just me going and, and and bringing cameras out to the neighborhood that that birthed me it shows a lot because they don't see that every day mm. they don't see that you know so me doing it there instead of going to hollywood or going on Kohanga, mm -hmm. you know la cienega and, and places like that it's, it's 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 a different energy you feel me so me spending time and, and always contributing and, and doing play, shows yeah, there y'all do a the lot there yeah we was on the compton the compton swap meet fashion center you know what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> and then basically gave a live performance and that's good energy for them to see that because they don't know that they can make it from out of there dare i say a kendrick right. classic uh -huh. yeah man uh -huh. they've been saying that this round two but you, listen you, you I, know my thoughts you kendrick i'll be the on first that. one to tell you I'm not quick to give out the classic title. Hey, I'm not either. I be trying, I be trying to school the, the 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 kids out there, man. Don't be quick to thought the instant classic. They did it with the first album. I thought I told them, let it live a little bit. <laughs> so I wanted to come back the second time around and make it even more intricate. Let it live a little bit. Let it, let it, let it, let it rotate and let it vibe out and let you true, truly understand what I'm talking about in here before you, you know, put the stamp on it. Because right. it, it not only waters down um, what I'm doing, but it waters down everybody else. What do you explain that? What do you mean waters it down? Because what happens is when you throw that word out, you can throw it out for anybody. That's how I feel. And, 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 and so it devalues the it, word. Yeah, it devalues because I want people to listen to my music. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? Initially, I make my music for people that's in prison because they got nothing but time to listen to it. And study. And study. And, 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 and you know, to pick their own message from it. And I want my, my fans to do the same thing. And, um, yeah, I've been preaching that for a minute. Yep. So, the but you classic are, thing is, is love, but I want you to really sit and see how much work we put behind it because it's a process. It's, Almost a two-year process making this album. Well, you, you are in a different category now, though, as far as artists who, when you drop an album, people are going to look at it with the eyes of like, this is going to be in that stratosphere. You know what I'm saying? You like, do you do you see yourself as that? You are in that category now as an artist, where people are thinking, where does this match up? Every time you release now, yeah. it'll be where does this match up against the yeah. greatest albums? Of course, you got to think like that. Oh, it's what you're doing in the studio. You feel what I'm saying? It's, it's Getting high and drinking Ciroc. <laughs> <laughs> Kendrick, uh, Mortal Man is such a great record. And can you talk about the creative process behind that and how you guys took those pocket interviews and manipulated them and made them yeah. your own? Um, I actually wrote the lyrics for Mortal Man on the Kanye tour. My homeboy Soundwave that made the beat. Um, he came with the skeleton of the drums and the pattern was so ill. So I wrote the music. Um, to make a long story short, I had these old, old Pac interviews. It was unreleased by this cat in Germany that shot them to me. And um, I was listening to him. I was living with him. And I basically came up with the idea of saying, let me make this my own interview. And let me put it on the back of this song because the lyrics are profound, you know, just like the interview is. And it only made sense. It all just came about as I was recording. Kendrick Lamar is here if you don't know And he's on Summer Jam 2015 um, For people that And I know you see it Because I know you're on social media heavy mm -hmm. What does it feel like when people don't understand What you're trying to accomplish with To Pimp a Butterfly And they send that hate your way Oh man, it, it don't bother me It don't bother me because At the end of the day It's going to touch you It's going to hit you And it's going to reach you it's And some, you're confident in that Yeah, I'm confident in that I'm, If my music was made To, to, to to um, grab you immediately I will have a Thousands of, of Hit singles on, on the radio You feel what I'm saying I, I, I've decided I, I don't want to I'm not that type of artist And I'm not knocking Anybody else Everybody have their own Initial thing But for me I make albums Where I want you to go back And listen to A hundred times If you listen to one time Cool But you're gonna go back And you're gonna figure it out Because the talk is going to be in the air and, and it's interesting. It's food for thought. 
Do you play that eye, that Kendrick Lamar eye joint that I was ranting and raving about that I don't feel like got enough shine because <laughs> I felt like your fan base hated on this song from the rip because it was acoustic. Yeah. Um, it was it sounded different. It wasn't your traditional hip hop song, and because it was positive. Yeah, I feel like you caught a lot of hate because of this. That's the best song I ever wrote. Really? Yeah. Well, guess what? The Grammys agreed with you, Kendrick. <laughs> Real tough. No, that's the best song I ever wrote because. I never thought in a million years I'd make a positive record coming from where I come from. Mm. Never in a million years. My homeboys too. But my homeboys respect me enough to say, do what you do. That's what it's it is. It's guys work, man. So, Doc, why is, uh, why do you decide to make the version of I different on the album than that, than the single version? Well, that was planned for sure. To go with the theme of the album. Um, actually, as soon as I made this version, I already knew what I wanted to do. For the album. Um, it basically just ties in everything together. Me going back to the neighborhood and, and performing this record. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know, trying to put the positive energy back out where I come from, and, and still, still trying to move between the madness of it. If you hear the skit behind it. Hey, so what? Go I'm ahead, Lord. No, go Real ahead. quick, Kendrick, you could have picked anybody to be on your album. Why did you pick Rhapsody? Why did you want to give her such a yeah, look? rap? Yeah, man, she's talented. Simple as that. It, 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 ain't, it, ain't, it ain't about the celebrity. It ain't about how long you 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 been in front of the lights and the camera. She been rhyming for a minute and she's been crazy. So it could have been it could have been her and I'm I'm glad it's her. Or it could have been a little kid around the corner if he got the skills to rock on complexions. And also, there's all you know. This has been rumored for a very long time, but is there gonna be a Kendrick Lamar J Cole album? Man, definitely, definitely. I, I still would love to do it for sure. I, I talked to the bro. Um, I don't know, probably a little bit over a month, and um, he's on a tour rocking. So we're gonna try to make something happen. We'll but still, is, we'll still are, talk about it. Are you trying more actively yeah. than before? <laughs> is there like an he's active actually working effort? Working on it. Man, they is want that. They want that. <laughs> um, how, how impressed were you? How impressed were you with J Cole's release? That was a pretty crazy thing that happened. Crazy, for him. crazy. How they went about it and, and, and popping up at fans' house. Come on, man. You, you don't you don't get the marketing resources from a, a, a record label. That's 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 them. Doesn't it doesn't it make you? Do you ever get proud about the fact that like you know people always ask us about the state of hip hop? Yeah. You know, and hip hop used to be blah blah blah. But then when you turn around and look, like the two two of the biggest artists in hip hop mm. are Kendrick Lamar and J Cole. Yeah. I don't know if there's ever been a time in history. Where two of the three or four biggest artists in the game were that lyrical and that committed to hip hop, you have to feel pretty good about where things are at. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And you know what's crazy about music for me? I like all energies of music. You feel what I'm saying? It's just a balance. Just gotta make sure we have that balance, you know. And it's up to me to to bring that. It's up to Cole. I, I know where he come from to bring that and keep that balance in there. You dig what I'm saying? And that's how you keep from knocking what everybody else is doing. As long as you maneuver through the cracks and, and, and get your message across everybody can't be alike at the end of the day Kendrick Lamar's here what um what's your favorite song on this to pimple butterfly if you had to pick one man it changed throughout the week um right now right now Wesley's theory the intro I love that record yeah I love it. what made you involve so much live music in this album why go live music why all these soul sounds and, and things like that and spoken word poetry because I know some of the backlash that you get I've, that I've seen from keep it real hip hop fans yeah. they don't love the poetry <laughs> Yeah, man. Why that? Why that direction? <laughs> That's delusional. Uh, <laughs> for me, it's just it's just sophisticated gangster shit. Period. Yeah. And uh, this this is my background. This is what I was raised off of. Um, this is what mom and dad was yeah, listening exactly. to. Exactly. And this is the album that I always wanted to make. You know, I, I, good kid, Mad City. I'm maneuver through the cracks. I know what the people want to hear, mm -hmm. and I also know how to get my messages across in between that. You feel what I'm saying? But at the same time, you sure wasn't that eye contact with Erica Badu that she gave you got you writing all that spoken word poetry. Yeah. Hey, he was writing like N.W.A. Hey. And then Erica cooked him a little food. He was like, "Hold on, you know what I was thinking? <laughs> I look at the sky, my eyes be blinking." I don't know if it's the eye contact, Ebro. I don't know if that's actually eye to eye. I didn't yeah. want to talk about yeah. Miss Badu's ass right now. Yeah. 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 Been that too. She's a queen, man. You got that? You got that clean, man? All right, let's run it right now. <laughs> It's the intro off uh, to Pimple Butterfly. This is your pick. This is your favorite joint this week. Hey, yeah, because simple fact is, you know what's crazy about this record? When I made it, it was, it's actually a, a real true inspire, inspiration because before I got signed, these are the things I said 
I wanted to do. I wanted Word. to get this, I wanted to get that, I wanted to take the homies, show them around the world, do that, do that, and say, middle fingers up to everybody, we home, you feel what I'm saying? And that's one of the parts of the, of the, the album cover represents, right. you feel me? But at the same time, the twist around it is, we get all this money, but the schooling doesn't teach us how to manage it. That's right. It's not a course or a subject in class that taught me how to deal with taxes. Nope. At mm -hmm. all. So I say, okay, you go this whole time without <laughs> getting locked up. You're doing something positive, and they try to send you right back as soon as you don't know how to manage the, 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 the government funds. You feel me? Because the only way to know how to know to know how to do that is from generations of wealth. Yeah. Exactly. That's how people know how to manage money. Otherwise, exactly. you don't know what to do with it. You don't know what to do with it. They don't teach you that in school. So I said it's up to me to put them energies and that 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 type of light out there from my perspective. Yo, Trey. It's Trey. What up, Trey? <laughs> <laughs> the classic is Dre. You it's got that. Trey. <laughs> Yo, this is Dr. Dre. <laughs> hey, you know it's funny. Right? I told him I needed that. I needed that classic, it's Dre, man. <laughs> Yo, what up, it's Dre. It's like the intro to the song, uh, Keep Their Heads Ringing. Yo, what up, this is Dr. Dre. That's a true story, too, me walking in this crib the first time. I'm like, man, what is this? I said, nigga, anybody can get it. The hardest part is keeping it. Yeah. Bar, changed my life. Anybody can get it. Homie from the block, get it, you, you. The hardest part is keeping it. Why? Because we don't know how to manage. And he knew that I wouldn't know how to manage my money. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta focus up. You feel me? Kendrick Lamar's on Ebro in the morning. Laura Styles, Rosenberg. Well, just real quick, that we we just played that record with George Clinton, and now I was just talking to Dot off the air, and you were saying George George Clinton was around a lot making this album. Yeah, everybody in the studio: George Clinton, Terrace Martin, Soundwave, Anna Wise, Bilal. We all locked in. No, Bilal's amazing, right? Crazy. Man. But what's it like when George Seven Clinton's months. hanging around while, for months while you're making an album? I just need him for the conversation. <laughs> I know he was getting worn out going back and forth in the booth. I said, you know what? I just want to talk, man. Just be around for the energy. And I tell you, we was we Nickelodeon. We PG-13 compared to the to the lifestyle they lived in the oh, business. Of course. Life. That's true. Did Period. you record most of his album in LA? Yeah. Yep. Nothing most in New York? I did. What I do in New York? I did hood politics. I've been named once since day one. You want boo boo? Your homeboy, you black? Where you from? I did that out here. Yeah. <laughs> boo boo, boo boo. Yo, um, so the the album doesn't feel coincidental based on what we've been living through, um, with the situation, uh, starting with Trayvon and through everything that's happened since. Yeah. It feels like an album that was necessary and timed perfectly in terms of what people need to hear. Yeah. Was that not coincidental? Did, yeah. did that shape your mind when, when getting into this space? When I first started, it was, it was coincidental because me writing was just coming from a standpoint of, of being pimped in the industry. You know what I'm saying? Which eventually went about in society too. You know, and all these situations started happening. So uh, I was building a skeleton already. You know what I'm saying? So it just, it just added more fuel to the fire of what I wanted to get off, to my, off my chest. You know? To me, one of the things that I love about this album is is that when we were growing up, old people like myself and Ebro, we were getting <laughs> we were getting Public Enemy albums and NWA yeah. albums that shaped the way I view the world to this day. Mm -hmm. Like the reason I am who I am politically is because of those albums. You now have been able to do that for kids who mm -hmm. they got in on the on, on Section 80 or whatever, yeah, right, and now right. you're giving them lessons that they never heard about. Um, what are the albums for you that you think about that way that kind of are very important that shape? maybe shaped your mind or shape other people's minds um my pops played a lot of death certificate <laughs> Ooh, ice cube yeah america's most wanted a lot of them records i didn't i didn't know what he was kicking at the time but as i progressed and got older i realized he, he he's he's talking about being a, a, a black man in society and maneuvering through the cracks you know what i'm saying so that was one of the things that shaped for sure being from the West Coast. We had a debate uh, because of the song You on your album. Diani, uh, DD yeah. Digital brought it in the room one day and we were talking about how mental health and uh, depression yeah, yeah. affects not only just black men but men in general uh, in exactly. a way that, you know, men because of the whole male ego yeah. <laughs> are afraid to say out loud that they going through something because your boys are going to be like, yo man, stop being a bitch. Exactly. Shut up. Exactly. And then your family Obviously, a lot of times when it comes to men, it's like, yo, if you're not bringing any money home or you can't contribute after a certain point. Yeah, you ain't a man. 
That's how they look at you. Yeah. All the time. Is that what inspired that song? Um, yeah, definitely, definitely. What you saying the first time is a lot of men can't express themselves like that. Mm. Especially, you know, I I give you an example. The the folks I grew up around, they can't they can't say when they, they feeling bad or, or feeling sad because it's just it's that mentality. It's that street mentality show I'm I'm strong, I'm standing up, but when it get dark, tears rolling down their eyes. You feel what I'm saying? And you can't ex- you can't express that. And what happens is that leads to one of the homies knocking himself off, you know, or being violent against somebody being else. Being violent against somebody else when you can't express that. And um, I always took it upon myself. I'm gonna be the voice for you, period. And that's that's always been the 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 blueprint of my music. I'm a voice for everybody who can't talk like that, who can't put their words together or express themselves on record. Because even though you, I'm, I might not be talking the same exact situation the sentiments is there and you can say he understands you feel me do you um take exception you know because since everything is going on socially you were in a billboard interview i think where you said you know black people have to respect themselves if they're gonna get anyone else to respect them a lot of people felt like you were victim blaming and (laughs) and and you know really not dealing with the issue at hand do you have any words for people that may not have understand what you meant by that quote oh i forgive them Period. Because, you know, obviously they don't understand where I come from. They don't understand what I've been through. They don't understand what I've done to my community. They tore it down. You feel me? So, for them to take my words out, out of context, um, yeah, I forgive them. Period. Because when, when I speak, I speak for self first. Mm. When I say respect, I mean, I still deal with that. Just because I'm in the limelight, don't mean I still don't have animosity toward this gang over here when they just killed two of my homeboys on tour, you feel me? Mm-hmm. And I got to get a call and say, that's yeah, what, that's, yeah, that's who did it. Yeah. I still feel that energy. I still feel that hatred. Mm-hmm. I still feel not respecting them because they got a different rag or a different flag on them rather than looking at them as a black man and say, I respect you because of that. Mm-hmm. So for those who said that, I forgive you, period. And, and, and don't, I demand this, don't ever take my words out of context, because I'm the only one, if not the only one, it's a, it's a few more out there that's really, really speaking from the streets and from everybody, every urban neighborhood in the world, period. I forgive you. Dot, are you, um, are you ever overwhelmed with celebrity like i've been out with you before and seen what it's like for you at least after the last album it's getting crazier now but you're you're a regular guy who happens to be an amazingly talented dude you are not the type who appears to be in any way craving celebrity but you are now a monster celebrity is it ever overwhelming for you just being in that role uh yeah yeah for sure because at the end of the day you know before I started doing music, I was always to myself. Everybody know that. My moms know that. My homeboys know that. When we, when we was out in public before the music, I was the one in the cut, just observing. I wasn't, I wasn't the loud homie. The loud homie, I love this. <laughs> <laughs> He'll love it all day. He loved the energy. You feel what I'm saying? And, and that's him. That's his personality since elementary school. Me, I've never been like that. And, and it only magnifies who you are, you know, when you get... Uh, uh, money or success and I, that's just who I am I can't change it how do you deal though are you cool with taking photos and doing all the stuff you can handle it yeah I appreciate that because I, I I look at the standpoint where I was 10 years ago you feel what I'm saying and, and if this photo is, is, is a monumental uh, gesture for a, a fan and, and can help them throughout their day I look at it as like that you know whenever I get or I'm feeling a, a certain way uh, waking up in the morning I just think of it From that perspective It's probably not a conversation I should have in public But um, I hear from artists That this summer jam stage Is a little stressful for them Yeah They they You know I've had artists tell me Like nah I don't want to do it this year I'm not prepared Or I don't prefer How big it is You know Because it's a big though? state I mean, I, mean, I don't I mean, know I wanted to hear from you Maybe you had some insight You know Because cats tell me that They don't necessarily love Being on, on that stage they don't necessarily love um, how intense those fans are. You, yeah, I can see that. I can see uh, is the energy they talk about. They not. 
I yeah. guess I don't know. I thought maybe you had some insight. Hey. Maybe you you know you are, me, you are you artist. I never had to perform at Summer Jam, so I don't understand. Out, For me personally, when I first started doing music, uh, <laughs> Top Dog man, we used to go to the clubs. It'd be thirty people we perform in front of. You feel what I'm saying? Talking to the mic. Thirty people, fifteen people. I'm performing in front of. So it's the same thing. If <laughs> these fifty people wasn't vibing. Mm. So I can get 25 people that's that's mean mugging and grilling so big because I still got to go back to them 15 people and remember where I was at and how much energy I still got off regardless of, of, of the energy that's, that's, you know, you feel from the crowd. And you just got to know where you at, man. Yeah. This is New York. Like you said, they might not be acting like they rocking with you, but they, they with respect you. you. They feel you. If they making eye contact the with time. you and they standing up, they with you. The but that, that's experience, too. Kendra's been performing yeah. here for years and years and years yeah. to know that the New York crowd, it, they might not jump up and down yeah. to every song. L.A. like that, too, though. It's the crazy part. L.A. like that, too. You know, we'll sit and we watch. But as long as they tentative, then you got it because it could be worse. You can be getting booed. Yeah, and I feel yeah. like with Summer Jam, it's like... <clears throat> I know plenty of times where you've been there and people become fans because of that performance yeah. that you put on. Real talk, real talk. But I, I can definitely see an artist saying they stress. Yeah, you know, if, if they don't have that that. Then that backstage guest list, everybody want to oh, come. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the part I be looking forward to because <laughs> not that's, me. That's the part I hate. <laughs> that's the part. Well, yeah, of course. Hey, because I go back to me as a kid. When I used to hear about it and be like, oh, Jay Z is back there. They was Yo, chopping Kendrick up Lamar's list down. is going to be one of the worst lists ever. His <laughs> yeah. list last time was horrible. Y'all get ready, man. Because he likes sneaking hey. people in. He thinks it's funny. Ebro, do you know Papoose's government name? <laughs> hey, Pap, you there too. Man. So I'm going to be there. Funny, man. You already know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yo, so um, I noticed earlier we was talking in, and um, when we were talking about how people uh, take your words out of context. Yeah. Um, it seems like that's a, 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 a sore a sore issue for you. Yeah. Especially is that, is that happen how how frequently is this happening? Well, it never really happened, but as as a black community, that's that's definitely sore. Because you supposed to you supposed to uh, uh, stand by somebody that's doing right <laughs> regardless. Right. You don't you don't you don't take a, a piece of a publication and justify for my sentiments <laughs> as a person as an artist you know so I look at them people as people that really don't know uh, my background or, or where I come from so yeah so be it but I mean do, do you feel that some of our behavior you know like um, you, you think of like uh, issues between you and the police or yeah. issues that fights and things. I mean, hell, we just had an issue here in Brooklyn with girls fighting in a McDonald's and it was caught on video. Yeah, and yeah. then them girls end up... Oh, that you know, was here. Yeah, that was mm -hmm. here. It was in Brooklyn. Yeah. Girl, the girls end up going to jail and the little girls fighting with five different girls in a McDonald's while everybody's standing around watching. Filming it. Standing around filming it. Standing around filming it. Like on World Star. Now, granted... I've been in a hundred fights, all the jumped time. all that. And I'm sure you have as well. And it's the, the you know, kids get in fights. Yeah, all the right. Time. Um, but I, it's what you're talking about with regard to respecting ourselves and respecting one another. That behavior that leads to some of the circumstances that we get into. Yeah, all the time because it's tough. It's just it's hard to stop a habit. You know, this is what we've been seeing since one, two years old inside the the, the family. You know, what I'm saying, and outside of our public schools. So. To, to, to start a, a new trend of me respecting the homeboy or her respecting the, the, the chick she don't like, it got to start now. It's going to take time to, to progress. It don't just happen overnight. You feel what I'm saying? So it's just a behavior. It's just a mentality, you know, and, and I still work on it. I still got to deal with it through personal issues. And I got to snap back and, and practice the things that I talk about. You feel me? But it's it's... It's, it's a psychic thing for me, and that's why I do the music. That's why I say lines. When game banking make me kill it, blacker than me. That's, that's, that's not just for everybody. That's really for me personally. I got to record and, and rap these songs on stage every night. So, so it's, it's, it's a practice. It's therapy. Yeah. Not only for the listener, but for me as well. Do you think that... Wait, hold on, Rosenberg. Sorry. The respect combo was alley-ooping our guy, Shawnee Culture, with his program. 
that he has Shawnee, in school. Shawnee? <laughs> Chumpin. Oh, Shawnee. Shawnee. Oh, Shawnee. Actually, yeah, you know, I'm going to be in Queens today. Yeah, but what's uh, the name of the program? It's the No Disrespect campaign talking to these high school kids about, yeah. you know, how they need to conduct themselves as adults out here. You know what I'm saying? Because, and really what I tell them is, when we're young, we feel like in order to get respect, we got to be the toughest one. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So in order to get respect from your peers, I got to beat this kid up or let him know I'm better than you. But when you get out here as an adult, oh, that's yeah. not how you get respect. Yeah. Truth you know, you got to treat people with respect in order to get respect. Man, hey, my mom's taught me that when I was a kid, you want respect, you got to give respect, period. True indeed. So that's real talk. I have, this is this is similar but different. Do you think that all of us were very excited, of course, when President Obama was elected um, and thought this would do great things? Some people, like Ebro, had a very watchful eye about it. Like, is this really going to be good? Here <laughs> we are. Here we are. We're coming up on the end now. It's like seven years in. Do you think President Obama being elected has overall for race relations in, the, in this country been more positive or more negative? That's a good question. Um, it rides the fine line, man. It's, it, it's, 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 I didn't think he was able to do all he wanted to do. Yeah, it, 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 it right between the lips, it, it, it didn't teeter over. Period. On a positive note, it it didn't. Um, and the powers that be, I think, it, it watchful eye, it, it stopped him from doing what he really wanted to do. Me personally, yeah, uh, I, I I think I agree, and I would also go on to say that it did end up pulling out yeah. some skeletons that people really wanted to bury. Yep, that hadn't you mean been of racism of racism, right? That hadn't been clearly and sufficiently dealt with. And Obama's presence made racists come screaming out of places that you was like, oh, Man. word? <laughs> That's how you feel still? Dude, I saw... So I think long term, it made us deal with some things that we were trying to brush under the rug that so I think could, may end up being healthy. It, I saw a stat the other day that said, like, some outrageously high percentage of Americans think... Obama poses a bigger threat to American security than Vladimir Putin. Mm. And he's our own president. Wow. It's hard to believe. You know what I'm saying? It's like, but you're right. Getting those things out there really does show us how much more we have to do mm. in terms of race in this And country. there's a generation coming up right now that gets to watch this. And they're not stupid. Teenagers ain't oh, stupid. Yeah. Teenagers, they're not stupid. 16, 17, 18 that are going to be voting. Uh, all it, What's going on in Indiana is crazy right now. The fact that a restaurant could not serve someone food because of their sexual orientation. That's not even, that's, that's crazy town. No, it's, it's, it's happening right now in 2015. That's crazy. There was a man hanging from a tree in Mississippi in 2015. Yeah. Right. That's, I mean, I know everybody likes to just talk about bars and <laughs> rhymes and rap all the time and, mm -hmm. uh, and they don't like talking about racism, but man, it, it's a real conversation and there's a lot of things that we got to deal with. But isn't that what makes uh, the To Pimp a Butterfly album so special? But that's also why people hate on your album. Yeah. Too serious, you're saying? It's too serious. It's not everything ain't fun and hunky-dory all yeah. the time. Yeah, you, 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 you fear what you can't understand or what you don't want to understand or looking in the mirror, period. Well, I think you're going to hear from a lot of kids who reach out to you and say a lot of honestly, in addition to all the all the all, all the black people who are affected by it, people like me who are going to reach out to you and go young kids, the, the 15 year old me's out there who are like, yo, I never saw the word this the world this way till now. Um, I want to know, like the game has changed. Do you feel like record release dates are gone? Traditional singles are gone. Yeah. All of this sort of things that you were locked into pressure wise, industry wise is gone. Um, in, in some form a matter um, I think now it's in the tradition where kids either like it or they don't no matter how many billboards you put it on no matter how many TV screens radio shows they're going to get it or they're not going to get it period um, they're going to stand by you they're going to ride with you and they're going to be loyal to you regardless you know so I think from from that standpoint yeah yeah it's a wrap kids kids are, are, are are determined to like what they like, you feel me, regardless of how many times you put them on award shows. Does that translate into you feeling like you don't, you know, artists like you don't need labels or, you know, that we just had this big title press conference yesterday? Yeah, yeah we, I think artists, artists like myself, we've been feeling like that for a long time, just off the simple fact we can put our music out on the internet 
um, and go overseas and tour in front of 3,000, 5,000 to 10,000 kids. You know, it's always been an independent game. When you look at cats uh, like it, what Wiz Khalifa done uh, or Mac Miller, you know, them going on the road and, and actually performing without labels behind them. You know, so it always been that way. Now it's just getting a little bit more of a, a entity as a whole as far as the whole rap community. Hmm. What are you thinking, Miss Info? I think it's going to be very interesting to see, especially like I was referring to the Jay Z title sh- music streaming. Yeah. Service. Did they approach you? Jay, yeah, Jay, me and Jay had a conversation about it, and I think it's a, a great idea. Um, just out of simple fact, us taking control of of, of 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 the music we have for a long time, and not having to fight with masters and things like that. You know what I'm saying? Ownership. Ownership. Ooh. Yeah. Exactly. Masters is a double edge. I was gonna say yeah. double meaning yeah. on yeah. masters. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good you caught that. <laughs> no, um, I, I, I do think that, you know, watching artists um, take control of their creativity, I think is awesome. Um, and distribution, I think, is awesome, too. Mm-hmm. Right. I think what ends up what's going to end up happening, you know, because people are already consuming music this way. The, the the fees that are involved at the publishers, right? right. The people who, you know, own pieces of the words that you write, mm. right? Because they gave you some money in advance. Like, yo, we like how you write. Exactly. Here goes some, here goes some big bucks exactly. so that we can own portions of the word that mm. you write and how to get played. Um, the fees that they're charging, right, for every time you stream a song. Mm-hmm. You know, the consumer is getting hit not only for the monthly rights to you know, have this membership for whatever streaming service, but you're also getting hit for streaming costs from the cell company, right? So you're getting hit, the the, the, uh, user is getting hit two times, Mm -hmm. right? right? Um, The artist is getting hit two or three times, the publisher, the label, this. So there's a lot of people eating off of the relationship between the artist and the fans. And the fan, there's a lot of people eating off that. And I think, and I love to see how artists are working hard to take control of that. On the other side are the business the business side of how many artists are going to be able to not take that advance money from a publishing company, uh-huh. not take that record label advancement, right? Yeah. Because they want to get on these platforms and get promoted and yeah. see if they still want to do that direct route like some artists can do. Right. It takes that much more hard work for them now. It you ain't, it ain't like the 90s yourself. where you just show up to a record label and get a fat check yeah. for putting out an album. That's gone. Right. Show up to a record label with three songs. <laughs> and, and I got, got my demo. You got your demo and you got your deal. Right. Yeah. It's different. Do you um do you appreciate like I, I have an appreciation for the fact that hip hop is back to the fact that you have to go do shows. Of course. Like if you don't have uh merch or shows, you don't have a career almost. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I love that. I love it because to be hundred percent real, your shows is what shows longevity. Period. You know, you can have uh, the greatest songs in the world, but them ticket sales and them kids coming to see you, that proves everything. Everything and I've seen it firsthand um, from from a mixtape artist selling out uh, uh, venues bigger than a major artist. I've seen it. So going back to the essence of that and being a live performer, that goes right behind you being uh, a great artist in the studio. It goes hand in hand, and every artist should have that. Period. Wait a minute, it just dawned on me. So Jay reached out to you, but Dre is your yeah mentor. Yeah, and Dre's with beats and they have beats music right so are you gonna put your music on title too uh I, I, I wouldn't know i wouldn't i had to sit down with my folks and figure out and what figure that. you feel what i'm saying but i just think it's it's it's, it's just a great idea for artists to take control yeah just this just the idea that and and jay-z always been about that he's been preaching that through his music forever you know what i'm saying even getting his masters back with his first album yeah you feel me so to see him execute that that's inspiring man period that's dope. Anything we left out, guys? Anything we left out, Miss Info? Hmm. Before we let King Kendrick well, out the room. One thing we talked about off air is just that, just the same way that you kind of bridged a lot of different generations with the Tupac interviews and George Clinton was dropping yeah, yeah. gems. Was there anything on the album, any voice from beyond mm-hmm. that you wanted on there but couldn't get? Um... It was Prince. Ooh. Yeah, I actually did. I went out to to his um his headquarters and we did that show. I think on, on the internet did it pop up? Mm-hmm. Um, we was in the studio. We was vibing, but we was pressed, man. 
we was prepped for time and, and more than that I, I didn't trip off getting the song done I, I really appreciate the actual game he was giving me about the same thing that we we're talking about because he took control he of took his control. music and that was the first changed thing. his name and everything yeah. wrote yep. slave on his face yeah. he was really 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 progressive with it yeah and he was he was he was breaking down some things man that I need to consider in in, in, in my career um just really taking control of your creativity. I I, I want I can't really put all the information that he because he's he's the mysterious mystique <laughs> man. But he gave me some some real jewels about that man. And, and what Jay is doing is just confirmation from what Prince was telling me. Yeah, I know. Yeah. During all my conversations with Prince and Jay Z, they're <laughs> always saying the same thing. You know, it's like, oh, I get it. Yeah. Hey, you guys, amazing. give it up for Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick! Every time you come by, man, we end up having like some real like yeah. knowledge talk. Yo, y'all yeah. kicking knowledge? We kicking knowledge over here? Nah, I love it here, man, because y'all 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 talk about a lot of the important things that um, don't necessarily get put out there for real. Along well, with great music and along with you know good times and Summer Jam 2015. Yeah, That's man. right. Well, listen, enjoy the rest of your day going to talk about yes, gossip sir. and other crap that people uh, ask you about. Oh, <laughs> shots. Hey, y'all go shots, 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 shots. <laughs>